to Medicon Aware Wellness Studio. I'm Angelica Maria Koch with your educational videos about optimal health and the most innovative and holistic approach to your well-being. Welcome to another inspiring video of the Discover series Healthy Family and Soul Medicine. It's all about how you can take care of your loved ones in the most holistic way. Today's theme is about fever and how to heal it especially among babies and children with the most top indicated natural remedies. Thank you so much for your comments about this subject as it inspired me to create a new video, but this time with more detailed information. So enjoy. To stay updated with more ongoing videos, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, share and like it with your friends and family. And if you're interested in my home study online courses, go to my website medicanova.net at the online academy. There you will find three courses. One is about first aid homeopathy for the whole family, a course I really can recommend you here. Another one is about pregnancy, labor and postnatal care. And the third one is called being and living quantum healing. It's all about what does it take to live an optimal health. It's about healing mind, body and soul. For further information, you can contact me at health at medicanova.net. So what's fever? Fever means that there's a rise in temperature within the body, frequently accompanied by signs and symptoms of an infection. So fever occurs when the temperature rises above the average range, which is about 98.6 Fahrenheit. But we're all individual. For some it's a little bit higher, for the other one slower, so we can't really say it's a black and white symptom. But a significant fever is usually defined as an oral or ear temperature about 102 Fahrenheit and a rectal temperature about 103 Fahrenheit. If you're an adult, of course fever can be uncomfortable, but it's not dangerous or serious if it rises above 103 Fahrenheit. Whereas with children, there's a whole different gamut. And here I really advise you to seek out medical support because there may be something else behind the fever, maybe a more serious infection. But before I give you the ins and outs here about how to heal fever in the most natural way, in this video, let's try to establish a new point of view of what fever is really about. Now, rather than trying to stop the fever attack at its first appearance, you know, the first day, try to relate to the fever as a helpful, even a necessary healing stage, especially during acute diseases like coughs or cold or childhood illness. See it as something positive that needs to be encouraged rather than to be suppressed. Now, by understanding that fever is a symptom and not a disease in itself, you may come to see that it's actually an ally rather than an enemy. Popping a pill and hoping that your condition improves, yes, it is reality, but there's a catch to it. So the over-the-counter pill might bring down the temperature and often it does, but it doesn't deal with the infection. Right? And that's not good medicine. Wholesome medicine is that it covers the fever and the infection. And in this video, I will share with you natural means and tools that covers the fever and the infection because that is true and wholesome medicine. The rise of temperature is directly proportional to the extent of the infection. So an increase in temperature means the infection is spreading throughout the body, whereas a fall of temperature means you're on the road of recovery. Now if the body or the temperature is rashly brought down without halting the infectious process, there's no way to find out what's really going on within the body. For sure the fever has dropped and it's not there anymore, but we don't know if the infection has been dealt with or is it dormantly active. Always remember, we are energy. Diseases are energy and they look for an outlet, for an exit. So if you block the exit door, of course, it will go to the next organ in line. It goes to the interior of the body and that's not what we want. So a high temperature generally indicates that the body's defense mechanism 
is fighting an infection. And the temperature variation therefore indicate how the body is coping. Now during a fever, the healing reactions of the body are speeded up, right? The respiration is faster, you perspirate more, you sweat more, even the blood carries more oxygen towards the organs. And you know, all these symptoms are there in the most intelligent way to cool down the body. Do you understand it? It's like we don't want to suppress the symptoms. The body creates them in the most fascinating and the most intelligent way. So attempts to suppress and control the fever artificially, like maybe a Tylenol on the first day, are likely to confuse the body's natural efforts to heal itself. So the body doesn't know anymore what to do. Should I go left or should I go right? I thought I was supposed to produce these symptoms and now this comes in and it tells me not to. And in fact, by doing that, you will extend the infection for much longer as what it's actually supposed to be right? and needed for the body. So each person has their own pattern of falling ill, experience their own unique symptomatology. One person in fever feels very hot but chilly and even shivers. The other one is irritable, intolerant of any disturbance, but wants warm and being covered up. The other one is thirsty, and the other one doesn't want to have any drinks. One wants company, the other one doesn't. Do you see what I mean? So a true medicine is to find a remedy or natural means which matches the same frequency of the patient's symptoms. That is the art of true medicine. So the average normal temperature in a healthy human is about 98.6 Fahrenheit, so it's about 37 Celsius, but this can vary. Most adults and children can run a fever up to 104 Fahrenheit, which is about 40 Celsius, for several days without a danger. It is quite normal for healthy infants to display 103 Fahrenheit even, 39.5 Celsius, and particularly if there's an infection involved. A temperature you know, above 105 or up to 105, I would say no. You need medical support. Go to hospital, please. And it's definitely a situation for concern. But remember that fevers get worse towards the latter part of the day and towards the night and they drop again in the morning. So you might wake up and say, oh, you feel quite okay in the morning, but only to get the fever back by the end of the day. We call it intermittent fever and it happens a lot among children. So a drop in temperature in the morning does not mean that the fever is past its peak. You have to rem really remember that. Now, what do I mean with healthy children? You might not like my opinions here, but I want to share it here. A healthy child for me means that it has given the opportunity and the environment to grow up in a loving and supporting um, family, school environment, and is really encouraged to thrive. Health-wise, the child is healthy for me if on the first day it was welcomed into this world, it was not tempered by chemical outside given means, either prescription drugs or vaccinations. The vital force is a dynamic state of beingness and it shouldn't be tempered. It should function at its best, particularly through the developing and growing years of a child. Babies, particular sort of a below six months old, really, really make sure that they don't get dehydrated. They have a tendency around this age and you have to make sure that they get a lot of fluid. So what to do? You take a digital thermometer, put it under the armpit or in the mouth, on the tongue. Now be aware that when you put it under the armpit, it's half a degree less in the, your temperature reading. Also make sure that you have a good digital thermometer, don't use the fever 
strips on the forehead they're absolutely useless they don't even go there encourage your child to drink if it doesn't want to drink force it almost with a ice cube or a frozen diluted fruit fruit juice even take a washcloth so it can suck on it a sponge down the body um, you know put it into a lukewarm bath I know it's difficult but it will help to bring down the fever sponging now you can take a washcloth um, you know the child lies in bed maybe take one of the legs sponge it down dry it off and tuck it under the duvet again and then do it with the other so this alternating heat on coolness will help to bring down the temperature of course if it's summer don't you know wrap up the baby with too much clothes and really make sure that it gets enough fluid if you breastfeed that's great but older children make sure that they get enough fluid on a regular basis you know every one to two hours um, yeah that helps as an adult you know don't use the aspirin right away because we do have side effects for the brain and liver you know try to use a natural solution first but what are the top natural remedies for fever in this video it's about accessibility it's about affordability it's like what you have at home right i want to educate you not to be helpless here everyone has water get a washcloth soak it in cool water rinse out the excess and put it under your armpit on your face on the sole of the feet you know you can the back of the neck is a good place the groins are really nice uh, places to bring down the temperature quite easily. Once the washcloth gets warm, soak it in cool water and start again. You maybe have to do a few rounds. My favorite is basil leaf. Yes, you won't believe it. It's so effective, even as effective as antibiotics on the market today. Hmm. It makes you think. Take about 20 basil leaves and um, add one teaspoon of crushed ginger in a cup of water, fresh ginger. Uh, boil it up and then boil it down to the sort of almost half of its initial solution. Right? And then add a little honey, drink this tea two or three times a day, maybe for two or three days, it really helps. Apple cider vinegar, I mentioned it so many times in other videos, but it's so effective, again here with fever as well, because it contains an acid component here, and it also helps to draw out the heat out of the skin. Of course, it's rich in mineral, and during the fever state, you know, we lose minerals, so it's nice to bring apple cider vinegar. Here, I would add it to the bath. So you take one cup of vinegar to a lukewarm warm water, soak in this water, I would say five to 10 minutes. After 20 minutes, you would actually feel an improvement setting in. It's quite fast. Um, soak the washcloth. You can do that too in a mixture of one part of apple cider vinegar to two parts of cool water. Wring out the excess, in particular in children, put it on the tummy, you know, or the forehead. It helps to, to bring down the temperature. Repeat it as often as you need it. If you take it internally as an adult, I would say mix about two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar and one tablespoon of honey, glass of water. Uh, you can also you know, reduce the honey a little bit if you don't want it so sweet. It's great because not only it will reduce the fever, but it will balance the pH within your body into more an alkaline state, which we need for the healing process. Garlic for the adults, yeah, throw it in. Why not? It's really effective here too. It sort of increases the body um, to perspirate more. So we can, now we want to shoot out and really push out the fever to the max. And so you get rid of it very fast as well. What I want to, to do is uh, sort of finely mince one garlic clove, add it to one cup of uh, hot water, steep for 10 minutes, strain, sip it slowly, maybe several times a day, 
it really helps to fight the infection. You know, garlic is so great. It's antifungal, it's antibacterial. It really uh, kicks in any infection what's in the body. You can also combine it with fresh ginger or separately if you want to. Um, again, ginger sort of helps to expel the heat from the body and it's again antiviral, antibacterial and helps to fight the infection, really boosts the immune system. Put two tablespoons of ginger powder in this case in a bathtub filled with warm water. Mix well soak in about 10 minutes and then what you do you pat your body really dry and go to bed straight away cover yourself completely with a blanket and very soon you will start perspirating you sweat it out right that's what you want if you want to make a ginger tea one half a teaspoon of freshly grated ginger to one cup of boiling water letting it steep for a few minutes Add some honey for it if you want to drink it several times a day. Really nice combination. So, I like also to add some herbal extract tinctures with it, which you can get hold of in your local health food store. This combo of the herbal tinctures and what I just shared with you, the bath and the rubs, is a fantastic combination to really get you on the road in no time. Of course they don't taste great so maybe your children won't like it and I will bring in children remedies in a minute but for adults yes I would highly advise that. The first one is called White Willow, Salix Alba, is used for thousands of years in Chinese medicine. Why? Because it contains salicylic acid. Now it was isolated, this compound, in the 1830, and you know what it is today? Our very sort of popular medicine, it's aspirin. Yeah, it's white willow. That's where aspirin really comes from. I would say one dropper, you know, three times a day, it really helps to bring down the fever. If you have digestive problems and accompanied with fever, think about meadowsweet wonderful uh, herb here. It's called Filipendula ulmaria. Um, very helpful here and it's not sort of uh, as aggressive as the aspirin but it contains salicylin as well. Uh, it's really great particularly for digestive ailments. A must is yarrow. It's called Achillea millifolium. Great to promote the perspiration again, eliminates the toxin and reduce the fever. Again, another gift from nature which contains salicylic acid. Right? We don't need to take the aspirin. We have other means which contains the same component to reduce uh, the fever and the infection and heal it. You can also combine yarrow very well with a ginger bath, for example. Now, you might not get all of these herbal suggestions in your local health food store, so choose the ones which you can get hold of. If you have influenza and flu, you know, and your uh, body's aching and there's a strong fever involved, bone set, it's called Eupatorium perfoliatum, really helps here as well. It can be a nice combination with yarrow, elderflowers, cayenne, and ginger even. Now, if you have fever in combination with migraines a lot, chronic headaches, I would suggest feverfew. Tanacetum parthenium really helps you to usually one dropper three times a day. But the first, foremost, and the one which I would choose is always echinacea. In the local health food store, you maybe find triple echinacea, which is a really strong one. It's um, echinacea angustifolia, purpurea, or pallida. But sometimes they only have one or the other. Take whatever you can get hold of, but it has a good quality. It's the most common herbal treatments for infection and fever. It's antiviral, antimicrobial, immune stimulant, and really can be used for all ages in children as well as in adults. It's a little bit pungy on the tongue, but so effective. In general, again, one drop of full, maybe uh, you know one to three times a day. Now to the children's remedies. Of course, I choose homeopathy. 
I don't have to advocate homeopathy because I do this for nearly 30 years each and every day with hundreds of patients in my life. So, and I've seen it as a mother myself. That's why I became a homeopath because it worked so well on my own children. So the first remedy you think about on the first day when you see, okay, your child is getting ill, it's called aconite. In the health food store, you get usually a, a number behind the name, which is 6 or 30. And that indicates the strength, so we call it the potency. You don't get anything higher because it's legally not allowed. So you're only dealing with this 6 or 30 potencies, and that's easy to understand. It's not too overwhelming here. Now, aconite is indicated. Let's say you go to the park, and it's a nice and sunny day. You got your toddler in your pram and you know maybe it's a bit sweaty or it was running around in the sand pit and sort of the later afternoon the weather changes it's a little bit cooler and the cool breeze sort of hits the top of its head we call it the jet sweat and i can guarantee you usually by the end of this day around midnight or particular it's usually the time it wakes up and it has an earache and a fever or a cold coming on. So what to do then? Right? Children, not uncommonly, become sick at the weekend or a Friday night. And you were all looking forward to a great weekend. Well, that's gone now. You're up all night, you know, trying to appease a crying child. So what you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a first aid homeopathic kit and contact me here at health at medicanova.net because I can advise you for the best source here. Then you have this kit at home, you have this remedy at hand and you know what to give. So you can stop the sleepless nights, you can appease your child very easily and the next day often the symptoms are gone. And how nice is that? You know, particularly as a young mom or young uh, dad with young, young children, that makes you really confident that you can deal with your health issues as well. So aconite is very much indicated on the first day only. Second day, third day, it doesn't work so well, then we need other remedies. Often there's an increased thirst for cold water. The body aches quite intolerable, particularly in adults. And there's also a restlessness involved, often quite an, an anxiety feeling as well. There can be a redness of the face, great heat, oftentimes there's often an outward pressing headache. The skin is dry, but there's this violent thirst, full bounding, frequent pulse, and of course the sweating relieves here. And the keynote here is often um, sort of started, the whole thing is initiated by this exposure of dry cold winds and where the body gets chilled when it's overheated. So it's actually great for uh, summer colds as well. Now for babies, I would say aconite six only, one tablet, maybe three times a day for one day only and then step back. For a little older children, toddlers, you know, and children or teenagers, aconite 30, one tablet morning and evening for one day only. For adults, I would say definitely aconite 30, maybe three times a day for one day or two days only. Now, as soon as improvement kicks in, you stop. You step away from it and you don't take any further tablets. The next remedy in line, which often follows aconite really well, is called chalcemium. It's the jasmine, it's chalcemium 30 in this case. Now, when you go into the second stage of a cold, you usually have body aches, you feel quite drowsy, everything is aching, you feel like lead and you just want to go to bed. And that's very much this, this picture here you'll see. So adults can even feel a little bit dizzy or feel like, oh my God, I'm fainting here almost. Um, there's an absence of thirst, right? They don't want to drink at all. So that gives it away. But always think about that you feel heavy, you want to go to bed, you want to have rest. There's also this chill running up and down the spine, which gives it away. Uh, often comes on, on warm, sort of relaxing weather. 
Again, the fever is accompanied by a sort of muscular weakness and desire just to have absolute rest. Try the aconite. If that doesn't work, follow it up with gelsemium. Same dosage as I have given you with aconite. So you all heard about belladonna, I'm sure. This is our major, most indicated homeopathic remedies with high fevers in children. But in order for you to choose the right remedy, I want to share with you the peculiar symptomatology of belladonna. Once you see that and you spot it and you give belladonna, it will work. I guarantee you that. It's, I've done it so many times. It's a wonderful remedy. So let's start. With belladonna, the fever is very high, so a hot remedy, but also you have an inflamed throat and inflamed tonsils. Right? The nature of the pain is throbbing. Throbbing throat, throbbing earache, throbbing headache. It's like everything is up. High fevers. The face is flushed. If you look into the eyes, the pupil in the iris is dilated, it's enlarged. Right? So the idea is you go to your child and you don't even have to touch it because the heat is steaming from the pores of the skin. Right? It's hot to touch and hot, it's just surrounded by this heat. But here comes the peculiar thing. You touch the extremities like the feet, they're cold. Right, and that gives it away. That is belladonna. These children dread water, so it's very hard to put them in a lukewarm bath. Right? They will be, oh God, they will scream. So make sure that this or your child gets enough fluid. Even wrap it around with a wet towel so the skin soaks up some liquid here. These children tend to dehydrate. So make sure, I can't stress it enough, to give them some fluid. Again, very hot. They maybe I'll have some chills with it, a little or no thirst for sure, but very, very hot to touch. A wonderful remedy works, I would say, in newborns, belladonna six only, one tablet, maybe two to three times a day for one day only. Right, then step back. For toddlers and children, uh, even teenagers, I would say belladonna 31 tablet three times a day, one day only. Adults probably need more, maybe two or three days and see how it goes because belladonna is very specific for intermittent fever. Right? So as I mentioned before, by the end of the day, it spikes and then by the next day morning, it's gone and you think like, oh, we are good. Now, the belladonna fever will definitely come back, but eventually it fizzles out and it's gone. So try belladonna. It's a great, great remedy. Of course, we have other remedies. For example, if you are exposed to um, wet and you were in the rain, walking or dancing in the rain, and that night, you know, you get your fever, it would be Rustox, for example, Rustox 6 or 30. We have Bryonia, many, many other remedies, but in this video, I want to keep it simple. So I hope that this video was useful to you and that you now can confidently help your children as well as yourself to heal fever in the most natural way. And don't forget, with these tools, you catch the fever and the infection. Give it a try and let me know a few successes because for me it's not just about you know sharing this information with you but I would like to know how you get on with that and never forget I'm here to help contact me at health at medicanova.net I'm so happy to help thank you so much again much love take care till next time mm -hmm.